Anybody else? Did they get one? All right. So that first page is. we did today. Someone begin to pray and you pray to 11. Praise and worship. Start at 11 o'clock. Okay? And, um, and then just follow from prayer. The reason this is, is to establish and turn the mind towards God. What is it that people, what is it to do when you, when you come in? You come in, you start talking, you start doing everything. So God, your attention is not towards God. Right. Right. What praying is will do, it draw your attention to God. All right? So everybody get in the mind, from prayer for mind, you start turning to God. Now you got a reason to do praise and worship. Because now everybody is what? God focus. Mm -hmm. We know everybody's going to come in here with problems. You're going to come up with things on your mind. Some of you are going to come and don't even want to be here. Okay? Draw your mind towards God because He is the burden bearer. I'm going back old school now. He's the heart regulator. Yes, sir. He's the burden lifter. Yeah, yeah. Are you understanding this? Yeah. So why why do you come to church? Just to fellowship. Just to see what somebody else is wearing or how things going to go or what the preacher is going to preach. All these kind of, is never about God. When we come in with the appetite, the scripture says, he that hungry and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So if you're coming to God because you want Him, then God will show up. Alright? And so this is the reason why we're doing this. To establish this mindset and the atmosphere. And every time the people of God gather in the presence of God, as we say for worship, it should create a prophetic atmosphere. It should create an apostolic atmosphere so that God can meet the needs of his people. But when the minds are not towards God when you come, all you're going to have is a dead, dry service. And guess who you're going to blame it on? The preacher, whoever's leading praise and worship, or whoever led the corporate prayer. They would just drive. They just didn't get, get us into the place. No. If one can get there, all it starts, all it's needed is, ah! Oh my God. And it'll start. It'll call somebody else to hop. That's all. It, that's all that is needed. All right. So. The second page I gave you is the name of God, or Jesus. Now, I gave you that, but what I'm going to ready to do is going to blow your mind. To know the names of God, or Jesus, ain't going to amount to a hell of being if you don't know you got the meaning, but the significance of the meaning to you. Alright, so me and Demon are going to do a little demonstration. And I need for you to pay close attention. Now everything that we do is a 
about God, right? So we come from God, we come to God for salvation. So the name of God is Jesus. Jesus, Jehovah, is one and the same. Philippians chapter 2. Read that. And look what it says. Verse 2, verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, Jesus, given him a name which is above every name. 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. That means that when you use the name of Jesus, things in heaven should submit to that name, whatever you ask. Wow. Are you hearing? It? So whatever you ask in heaven, in the earth, and under the earth, or in the grave. So if your body's in the grave and you say, Mama, in the name of Jesus, get up. Mama going to get up because you use the name of Jesus. Then it says, verse 7, and that every tongue should what? Confess. Confess, Confess means to say, to speak. What? That Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed one, is Lord or Jehovah. And that you should stand fast in one spirit with one mind scribing. I'm sorry, I'm jumping out. Where did I, how did I get up here? All right, let me go back. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always what? Obey, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation or deliverance with fear and trembling. All right? Everybody got that, right? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. is about God. Can everybody see this? Everybody see it? Alright. So, the next one is sin life. When Adam sinned in the garden, he brought sin. Sin is what separates us from God. So there was nothing that we could do to abolish the sin life. You got to understand that? All right, now watch. Since there's sin in our life, it affected our knowledge about God, our understanding about God. Oh my God. Our wisdom concerning God, then, and then what God did was He Himself became a man so that He can redeem man. So, in order to redeem man, He had to first deal with the sin factor. Mm -hmm. So the aunt, watch this. The scripture says, life is in the blood. blood. So when Adam was in the garden before he sinned, blood did not flow through his body. God did. That's right. That's right. So he had God life. Mm -hmm. That's it. But when he sinned, God had to kill an animal and put the animal's blood in Adam mm -hmm. so the Adam still live. Mm -hmm. So now Adam have sin blood. Wow. 
And the only way the sin blood can be removed is God blood had to come. So when God, through Jesus, became a man, he took on the blood sin. The scripture says he became sin. So how did he become sin? Blood. Hello? <laughs> Operators, anybody here? Yeah. So, then Jesus shed that sinful nature, blood. Where did he spill it out? On the cross, right. on the way through the cross. He will be. <laughs> They whooped him and made him bleed. Mm -hmm. Come on now. They put a crown of thorns on his head that was two, the thorns were two inches long, and they stuck it down on his brow and made him bleed. They took and nailed his hands to the cross, to the cross mm -hmm. and made them bleed. They nailed his feet to the cross and made them bleed. When they raised that cross up, it dropped down in the ground, jawed his body, and pulled every one of his bones out of joint. Mm -hmm. His face swole because the blood began to run to where the pain, pain was. Glory God. And he bled. Yes, sir. Yes, he then the soldier, he's on the cross, he is bleeding from his head, his hands, his feet, his, feet, his back, his face. Now remember, they whipped him. With a whip, they had nine scrap, uh, leather scraps in it. And in the end of the scrap, the tide was metal sold in it, that when they beat him in his back, it tore chunks of flesh out, and he was bleeding in his back. They poured his beard out from his face, and if you pour hair out from your face, you gonna, your face is going to bleed. bleed. Now you understand why there is power in the blood. blood. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Stop right there. Go back to the beginning. Man had a sinful nature. Since he had the sinful nature, he was blind to all that was God. Oh, yeah. He could not see. <laughs> All right. He lacked knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is to know God's mind. Understanding is know the principles of God and how God works. Wisdom is know how to apply it. Wow. That sinful nature. Cause us to be bored of all that. So we were blind. We couldn't see. Take those papers and throw them up in the air. This is our life. All messed up. Because of the sinful nature of blood. And you're blind. And you need to find God. Without taking this off your face. Find the paper. It's got God's name on it. Don't look at it. Close your eyes if you have to. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Wow. Nope. 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 Stop. Are you understanding this? As 
long as we are blind, we'll never find it. Come on now. <laughs> Everybody got that? Yeah. Now, on the piece of paper, the native just came in. All right, on this piece of paper you got with the names of God, the title says Jehovah, the highest God, right? Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so the scripture says that we were lost in our sins and we were what? Shaking blind. Down. Is there anybody here that's blind? How many of you are really, truly blind to God? You're just like this. You're in darkness trying to find God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be more people be honest with yourself, you're blind still trying to find God. Yes. You're trying to find God in your ministry, in your home, husband, wife, and children. You need wisdom. Your job. Yes, Lord. <laughs> And most of all, we're trying to find eternal life. Got it? Mm -hmm. So, if you didn't answer, that means you found all this. Mm. Mm. Come on now. I knew it ain't the second one. I know that's right. So every time you get in trouble, you holler, Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And then nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Every now and then something might take place. Mm-hmm. But it's mostly because of God's mercy. Come on now. Wow. Since you don't understand the meaning of his name, he give you mercy anyway. When we knew, when we use the name of Jesus, like the apostles did, who fully understood it, every time they spoke it, right. it happened. something happened. Why doesn't it happen with us? We don't understand the name. I, in early in ministry, I had to get before God so that when I used the name of Jesus, like I studied it, like I searched it out, then it was supposed to work. When I used it and nothing happened, and I was using it in vain. And the commandment says, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Right. The word vain means empty. I have no purpose. Right. He said, well, I, when I called his name, I had a purpose. Yeah, but your faith didn't activate him. Mm -hmm. See, when I, when I have a purpose, then I must have faith first before I speak. Come on now. Faith is not believing that God is going to do it. Faith is that when I say it, God has done it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. God is not moving. God has moved. Yes, yes. 
When Jesus died on the cross and said it is finished, That's right. then he had moved. When he came up out of the grave three days later, and then 40 days later ascended into the heavens, the scripture says he rested. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? <coughs> one, one a writer gives us a picture of what Jesus did. We say and been taught that Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. All right? That's just an illustration for us to get an understanding of actually what the finished work was like. There is no throne in heaven where Jesus sits. Heaven is his throne. There is no three stone thrones and there is not even one throne. Heaven is his throne. The psalmist says that heaven is God's throne and God sits in heaven. Mm -hmm. And earth is his footstool. Not sit in a place in heaven. He sits in heaven and says the earth is his footstool. Mm -hmm. So he sits in heaven and rests his feet in the earth. Which means this. The purpose and the principle and the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God is from the heavenly realm, which is spirit. Uh -huh. Earth is the natural realm in which God manifests that, which is spiritual. That's right. That's why God created heaven and earth. He created a spiritual realm and an earthly realm. And in the earthly realm, manifest that, which is in the spirit. I know. <laughs> that was way out there, right? Well, look at, listen to it this way. You're still blind. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this room is looking to go to heaven, right? Yeah. What if I tell you that there is no heaven? Right that man don't blast me. <laughs> listen. You already did. When you die, you return to heaven. It is, it, it, is, it is a state of being rather than a place. When this world ends, God will create a new heaven and a new earth. Why would he do that? Because earth is designed for the manifestation of that which is in the spirit. Since the first earth was polluted, God had to create another one that would manifest pure holiness, yes. pure likeness <laughs> and image of him without sin. And what? He destroyed the tree of knowledge which produced the east. So in the, in the new heaven, in the new earth, there will be no tree of knowledge. So when I die, I am looking to go to the new earth. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Yes. When my spirit leaves this body, it immediately goes to heaven. Yes. Since my spirit is wind, sure. then heaven is not a place. Right. Right. Cause wind can't sit. Right. <laughs> Paul says, "No, no man after the flesh, but all men by the spirit." Spirit in the Hebrew means wind. Wind. Adam was just like this piece of paper, a body laying there until God said, blue bread, and then brought life to the soul. When the body dies, God takes away the bread. And it's just laid, laying there. Watch this, dead. Mm -hmm. 
The definition, the Hebrew definition of death may separate from the source of life. So in order for something to lie, to die, the spirit that gives it life must leave. Wow. <laughs> now, everybody, everybody, everybody still with me, right? Y'all really, I feel y'all now. Y'all on the wagon now. <laughs> y'all on the wagon now. now watch. All right? So, back to the paper. Jehovah, the highest God. Thou art the most highest God. There is no God in heaven. Listen to me. There is no other God in heaven. Right. All of the gods are in the earth. <laughs> he says, I, to, I, don't know, I, I, I can't remember what prophet was. He says, there is no other God here beside me. Then he says this, if there is, I don't know it. So there's only one God in heaven. That's Jesus. And Jesus left heaven. Came in the earth and manifested himself. As a man, and God became man. Since he came in the earth realm, he had to have an earth name. Right. And the earth name is Jesus. But that name does not define who he is. His totality. Mm -hmm. Right. I just gave you some of his titles. Say that again. Mm. When he reveals himself to you, you give him a name. Oh, he's my rock. Yeah. Wow. I was taken and God held me up. He's my boat. <laughs> what the, so watch this. Moses said, God, who shall I say? Send me. He said, you tell them that I am that I am. In other words, he whatever. said, I will become whatever the name is to be. See, when you keep locking him down to one thing, he can't become the rest to you. Wow. Why? Because you're still blinded. And this is what? Sin. Wow. <laughs> so Jesus died on the cross. Became sin, watch, shedding his blood, paid the sacrifice so that the blinders could Come be removed. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing mankind has to do is find God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's it. Find God. Once he gets God and established the oneness with God, everything else you get, you put it behind or in front of you. The next thing he needed was knowledge. The next thing he needed, understanding. Now, now to gain knowledge of God, it means to have God's mind, to understand like God. See, when Adam sinned, Adam, God said, behold, the man has become as one of us. 
what? Knowing knowledge, good and evil. To know good and evil means we are like God. Right. Do you not know that you have the ability to create good and create evil yes. yourself? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was talking to my granddaughter this morning, and I said, every choice that we make, whether it's good or bad, we are the one that gives it power. But we must suffer the consequences of our choices. Right. Yeah, that's it. And what, watch this, what happens to us when we find God and begin, begin to gain knowledge of God, we give up our right to make our own decisions. Wow. Yeah. So the more I get to know God, the next thing I have to get is understanding. That's it. When I get understanding, now I'm beginning to understand how God works. What to get God to do something. Uh -huh. How can I make, how can I get God to make my hair grow back? <laughs> how can, if I cut myself, how can I get God to heal my cut, to close this wound? I need some money. So how can I get God to provide finances? I need healing in my body. How can I get it? Watch this. It starts with knowledge. knowledge. Now watch this. Watch the knowledge. All right? On the sheet I got you, Authority. Power is authority. Might is what? Ability. Strength. Mm -hmm. Strength. So God is the God of all authority and, and strength. strength. So in other words, if it moves, God's in it. God's in it. <laughs> Amen. What? When it rains, it rains by God's authority. Come mm -hmm. on now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Watch knowledge. See. Oh my God. Help me. If I just disappear, it's okay. <laughs> knowledge teaches me that God established an order in the earth realm. In order for the earth to receive rain, the sea and the rivers must give it up. Right. So what happened? He calls the sun to get hot one day. Mm -hmm. When it gets hot, it causes water to, to evaporate. Dry. That's right. The evaporation returns back up to the earth. Fills the cloud. How do you know when a cloud is full of water? It turns dark. No, it's black. Yep, turns dark. A white cloud gets black and then it empties itself. Yes. Come on now. Uh huh. Oh, man. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh Are you understanding this? Yes, sir. But all of this is happening in the earth realm. So God is not coming out working. He's already put it in place. Come on now. But you got to have the knowledge. But you got his name. But you don't understand what he means. You're looking for God to do something that he's already done. Come on now. You're looking for God to become something that he's already become. Come on now. You are Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
And you want him to move. He's already, <laughs> what? It's already status. It's already in place, bro. Watch how interesting this is. Knowledge. One more watch. It's the earth that thirsts and cries out to the spirit realm for water. Then God makes it hot. Watch this. And it says the sun parches the earth. So when you get parched, you get what? Thirsty. Harvest God moon. Wow. The sun calls the earth to thirst. At the same time, the earth is thirsty, the rivers evaporate. Mm. And they're going up. You get in a cloud that's white. Turn it and out. sometimes if there's no cloud, it becomes a cloud. Yes. Called cloud is nothing but water. Right. And it fills this cloud, and the cloud becomes black. And then it empties itself. And it's amazing how it's over the ocean, fills itself over the ocean. A wind blows it over the ocean, empties the land, and when it gets to a place where the earth is pouring it, the water falls. Wow. <laughs> I was coming yesterday, I was coming from Goldsboro to Wilson. As I was leaving Goldsboro, coming into Pyro, it stopped pouring. So it's, we got a pipe. It stopped pouring out rain. As soon as I got through Pyro, just a little bit, it stopped. No mm -hmm, rain. Mm -hmm. I get outside of Fremont, it's raining. Get near Black Creek, no rain. Get near Wilt uh, 301 XL 795, it's raining. Get to our house, no rain. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because the rain only thawed where the earth was pulling. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Glory God. What is it, Zion? What is it, those of people Zion? What is it I've always said? It ain't that hard, drill sergeant. <laughs> There's something else that I always say, and that was when you're full. Oh yeah. God can't feed you. Right. When you're full, you're not hungry. So there's a song that says, "I thirst for you." Yes. I thirst for you. In a dry and barren land. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Then it goes on for me. It said, "Send the rain." Yes, yes. Are you getting this? Yes. So, if you don't have that knowledge of how to get God to move in what He's already created, wow. Wow. He's not supplying the need, He's already done. Supplied it. All right, the knowledge of things to understand it. Now I understand that, so I know what I got to do. Right. When we see a dark cloud coming and it's thundering, it's lightning, how I many you get afraid? All right, we just experienced on the East Coast a hurricane that came up and destroyed a lot of places up in the island in the Caribbean. Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. come on up through Florida. We got a little bit of that rain and wind the other day. Then you had three out on the Pacific coming out that way, three right behind one another mm -hmm. that was coming up. <coughs> wow. And it pulled. And it pulled. <laughs> Oh and my the God! Was so great that it created a hurricane. Wow! 
Girl, I need to put this thing down right now. I can't do this no more. Oh my God. Watch. Oh. When a hurricane and a tornado and a real bad thunderstorm comes up. Mm -hmm. Now let me let me let me let me give you an understanding about thunderstorm. Anybody know? Besides be gone. Anybody know what makes thunder? <laughs> Two dark clouds bumping. They're moving and heading toward the same thirsty land. Wow. And when they do, they bump. Mm -hmm. Then you hear a thunder. Notice, right after the thunder, you see a flash of light. Mm -hmm. One cloud is positive energy, the other one is negative. So when they hit, they call the boom and then spark. Oh my God. Listen to me. Don't y'all jump up. Don't y'all jump up. It's hard to see here right now. When you pour on the spirit realm, the finished work of God, you create clouds that are full. Come on now. And they are start fighting. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. In the spirit realm. Come on here. Create a hurricane. To bring what you're pulling on in your life. But you are afraid of the thunder. But you need it. You're afraid of the lightning. But you need it. It's all a sign to let you know that rain is a power. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be afraid of trouble. Don't be afraid of trouble. It's only thunder and lightning. It's only thunder and lightning. Right before it rains. Right before it rains. Yeah. Thank you, God. Got to move on. Got to move on. Woo, glory, God. The next act of understanding is what? Wisdom. Y'all see, y'all see how Elder Big God is doing. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> what? When we call out something, it don't come to him. Uh oh. He go get it. Uh oh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. The scripture tells us he that finds wisdom finds favor. That's right. Yes. Okay. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Yes, sir. Wisdom is understanding how to apply knowledge. Wisdom. I plant my seeds in the spring. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Why? Because April shout right. bring Mayflowers. <laughs> That's wisdom. I don't plant my seed in December. Right. Why? Because that's what? Winter. Winter time. Do y'all not understand season? Do y'all not understand right. what happens in winter? What happens in winter? Things die. Everything right. dies. Why? Because all the resources that's in the earth, the water, the nutrient, goes down further so that the top upper part of the earth can't live. So the water removes itself from the root of the trees so the leaves can die. Wow. So in the winter time when the temperature is cold and it rains, 
The ground does what? Freezes. Notice it's froze just on the surface. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. It ain't froze all the way down, just on the top. Because if it had, if the water was still up where it's where where it's to be during the spring and the summertime, then it will freeze everything. Right. And it yeah. will kill all sorts of the earth. Right. Yeah. Cause the life of the earth is in the earth. Yes. Right. Not on the earth. Earth. <laughs> you want some gold? Where do you go? You got five K. And you gotta go deep. Coal. Oil. Resources. It's there. <laughs> Everybody follow? Mm -hmm. yeah. So wisdom is how to apply. So I got I got two clouds that pull, they're black, they're bumping each other, it's thundering and it's lightning. So wisdom tells me to do what? What? Prepare yourself for what? The rain. Because isn't it amazing that it warned you just before? Yeah. Yes. The atmosphere changed. Mm -hmm. The wind picks up a little bit. Mm -hmm. The temperature drops. Mm -hmm. Give it a half. I'm going to hold you say, right. Storm coming up. Mm -hmm. Now you know, Grandma, the sun's out shining. Don't 